Learn Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 2445. Find the last one in a row of zeros and ones with my special guest today, Dan Mayo. Welcome back to the Mr. Excel Netcast. Dan, boy, it's great to have you. You were just featured in the last episode, 2444, where we were trying to uh, search backwards or reverse a, a text string. And uh, while I was talking to you about that, you came up with this interesting problem. Uh, which is also searching kind of, it's sort of searching from the end of a list as well. Tell, tell me about this uh, situation here. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me back. It's been, uh, as you can see on the screen, eight years since I think I did a, a video, full video with you. Yeah, that was, um, that was the I shuffle, like here last week. shuffle yes. a deck of cards, right? Yeah. That was indeed, yeah. which uh, was just a fancy way of saying, you know, random numbers without duplicates. Um, okay, yeah, so anyway, this problem we're looking at today is a pretty common one in financial modeling, which is my world of using Excel. Essentially, you will have a test that return true or false or zero and one, and you know, it's not a continuous string, it's some yeses, some noes, and we want to find the last instance of, of say, uh, the one. It happens a lot in financial modeling. The test could be anything. What we're looking at today's example is just, uh, you know, when is cash flow for a period negative? Just to keep it uh, straightforward to focus on the, the formulas. Um, and as I was just saying to you a few minutes ago, if the question was find the first instance of a one, it's quite simple. Uh, a simple match function will do it with the last parameter of zero for, a, for an exact lookup. Um, and that will pick up the, the first one. But if we want the last example of a one, um, and in particular it's some ones and some zeros and some ones and some zeros again, rather than a continuous block of ones, we need uh, a different solution. And so today we're gonna look at a few different ways to do it. That's cool. Now, it, it's funny, probably about two weeks ago, I had a video uh, where I had to find the only one, the only, there was only one and there, everything else was an error. So it was a one yes. single number in a sea of errors. And yes. I was able to use the match looking for a very large number. But this that's not gonna yes. work. That trick won't work here because we have multiple ones. And so if I tried that same method with the, the binary that's search, right. it, and it, it's, gonna, it's not gonna work at all. Absolutely, and as you know, when you do approximate lookups um, for a number that's not in the set, when it's not ordered, you get all sorts of unexpected results. Right. Okay, so we have three different methods today. The the traditional method we're gonna talk about first, and then yes. uh, the, I'm gonna show a faster method thanks to Microsoft 365, and then what we think, what we both think is probably the, the clever way to go. All right, so. <laughs> let me... So the traditional way is basically to use a, a helper row. Um, we like doing that in financial modeling. There's no bonus points for doing something um, in the most condensed set of cells possible. We, we like to focus on clarity, you know, ease of reviewing for a reviewer and for a user. So the helper row, we just need something that again, will return ones and zeros, but is only going to return a single one in the instance we want. Um, there's a few different ways to do this, but they all involve looking forward. Um, so uh, again, financial modeling, we like one row per one formula per row that we can drag across. So we're looking for something we can write in D13 and then drag it across the row as a consistent formula. Okay. And when I say it needs to look forward, uh, which is a little bit of a no-no, we avoid it where we can, but when there's no other option, that's what we do. Uh, so forward looking, we're looking as part of the formula in column D, we're looking at column E all the way out to the end. Uh, and in this case, the, the data ends in column O, and we actually write the formula to anchor at column P. Uh, and we do that just so when we drag it across to including column O, uh, Excel doesn't move the dollar sign and, you know, all our auditing tools flag it as a different formula in that last column, so. Perfect, okay. That's that, and yeah, as you can see, the formula is just simply looking at two conditions. We need a one in the current period and we need all the future periods to be zero. Um, it, it, there's a lot of ways you can do that. I just like a simple AND function and then a, a one times at the start to turn the true false result from the AND in, into a one and zero. Oh, nice, um, yeah, that makes sense, makes sense. All right, good. Uh, so now that you have this single one. Uh, yes, now that we have that single one, um, it's just a much simpler problem of finding, you know, where is the one in, in a string of everything else is zero. Um, index match is, you know, how we train our brains to, uh, to, to be the first solution we always think of in, in uh, a problem. Um, and, and so there, that's just a, a very simple, uh, you know, 
yep. uh, standard index match. Uh, v lookup or H lookup, sorry, in this case could do the same. Look up, X look up, uh, and so on, so on. And then just below, I, I show you a, probably a, a more straightforward way, which is uh, sum if. Um, the the sum if only works if what we've got in row four is numerical, uh, whereas the index match of course will work if there's like uh, text labels in row four as well. Okay. Um, but being financial modeling, it's typically a, a date stream we have up the top, which is of course numerical. Um, and that's typically what we're looking to get as an answer is a single value from that date stream. So really what you're getting is you're getting zero times this date, zero times this date, zero times this date, all the way out until one times this date. And then since there's only one one, that's the answer that we're getting. That's exactly right. That is exactly what the sum is doing. Is um, yeah. Some product, of course, would, would have worked as well with uh, the end of second array just being you know, row 13 equals one, but yep. sum if is simpler. Perfect. Yep. Okay, great. So now, thanks to Microsoft 365, uh, this became dramatically simpler because XLOOKUP or XMATCH now has the ability uh, with this search mode argument to search from the end, right? So we have four ones there. I've gotten rid of the, the helper row. We're just trying to figure out where the ones are in this range. And uh, I can tell the XLOOKUP to look for that one from the end, uh, which will return, uh, you know, whatever's in this column, essentially, right? So equal XLOOKUP. I'm looking for a one. Where am I looking for it? I'm looking for it in that range right there. I'm not copying this anywhere, so I don't have to press F4. What do I want to return? I want to return the dates up here in row four. Again, no F4. And then I'm watching the little arguments there. If not found, well, I know it's going to be found. Uh, so I'm going to leave that blank. Match mode, I'm going to, um, we're doing an exact match, which is the default, so I leave that blank. And then here, here we are out in the sixth argument, uh, the search mode, and we're going to search last to first. So a negative one, a negative one will have that search right to left in this case, since it's a horizontal array and returns the September 30th of 2021. All right. So I'm super happy with that uh, because it's really simple and I can explain it. But of course, the problem is. Problem is not everyone has access to this, especially when you're writing models for clients. Yeah. Um, you never know who's going to use it from the client's end, who else they need to share it with. Um, and so as professional financial modelers, we're still not at the point yet where we like to put uh, X match and X lookup in, in our uh, external models. Gotcha. Okay. But there's a third method. All right. You want to explain? There is a third method and uh, I won't take credit for this. I'm a, a colleague of ours, uh, Dear Medelli, who I would hope many of your watchers, uh, viewers would be familiar with. Um, use this in just a model on a completely different topic that you sent me and I saw it and I thought, oh, that's actually a really good way to solve this problem. Um, so no helper row and arguably a, a more straightforward uh, formula to write than what you just did with XLOOKUP or, or XMATCH, which you know, is, is equivalent. And so here it's just looking at the whole row of ones and zeros uh, and it's Finding, it's using that essentially as a condition, uh, being the if condition, around a, a max function. So we're looking, you know, if we did max of row four, well, then we're going to get with the last date, you know, right. 31 December 2021. Um, max ifs, which is behaves like the max function, but it says instead of including every cell within the range as part of that max, we can condition it on something. Um, and so here we put in as our condition, or well, we need row eight to equal one. And so as you can see in the syntax there, row four is what's the range we want to get something returned from. A criteria range where all our ones and zeros is row eight. And then what criteria do we need? Uh, one. And that, that's all there. There's dot, dot, dot. You can see in the syntax because we could put in second and third conditions if we needed. But right. here it's only the one condition we're looking at. And so much like <laughs> that makes you know, it really simple when you're explaining it? the summits. Yeah, yeah, it does. And so now the max says I'm going to ignore January 2021 and I'm going to then include February and March. I'll ignore April, May. I'll include June uh, and, and so on and so on. And so then it's only taking the max of five or four, four different date values in this case. Right. Um, and September was the last. Obviously, this needs what is in row four to be um, sort of sequentially increasing as numbers. But uh, again, in a financial modeling context, this is what we're always going to see. We always have models with one time period per column and they're always running 
We always delight us of the rest. So. There you go. All right, that that works great. Now that and again, it has to be dates or numbers up here that are they're sequentially increasing. If it was text like A B C D E, Max if is not going to deal with that, is it? I don't think so. No, of course not, because Max couldn't deal with that, right? Yeah, of course. Yes. Um, right. So, and this will have slightly more accessibility than the the XLOOKUP because people uh, using XL twenty nineteen as the standalone product would have Max ifs, but they don't have XLOOKUP. Uh, or people just who are yet to or on XL three six five, but are yet to get the uh, the updates. Right. You know, would would have this as well. Right. This goes back. Uh, I I think I if I recall right, February of twenty seventeen. So a lot more people would have max ifs at this point. If you're back in Excel 2016, I would think so. then of course you're still going to have to go with the traditional method. It is. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, or, I mean, we're not going to talk about it now, but if you're on Excel 2016, you can use max open bracket, if open bracket, and then enter it with control shift enter. Oh yeah. And, and that you, it's a slight tweaking of the syntax. You basically need the if condition to return uh, the word false. Um, you type in, you know, false as the value of the false argument. Um, and that's because the max and the min functions, when they're looking at a range of cells, some are numbers, some are the word false, they will just ignore the false. Oh, so yeah. You awesome. can do that too, but but that's another video. <laughs> sure. You know, and then I, I'm thinking of other, like we could use the new filter function, but if people don't have X lookup, they're not going to have filter. They're not going to have filter. Yeah, right. That's so right. There's, there's all sorts More of people would have this. XLOOKUP than filter. I know I got XLOOKUP before I got the dynamic. Yeah, right. of course. So. Of course. That's yeah. right. All right. Oh, that is great. Uh, so, Dan, I, you know, since eight years ago, I, I met you at the Model Off World Championships in New York City. Uh, I did, in almost nine years ago now. Nine years ago. December 2012. Right. And, yeah. and I was fascinated. Uh, you know, I follow you on Twitter, and, and I, I saw that you recently, a, a few years ago anyway, were... Uh, you know, at, at a championship table in uh, a poker tournaments. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> tell us. Tell us about. Yeah. That. Tell us about your your poker. Uh, is is that a side sure. gig for you or? Uh... Um. Yeah. It's it's obviously still my main source of income. Still comes from uh, financial modeling consulting. Um. But the poker's got more serious. That was at the the Aussie Millions, which is um, like a big poker festival that is on every January down in Melbourne. Um. It's not as big as the World Series of Poker that goes on in Vegas once a year, but it's it's still a pretty good series. Uh, and yeah, I won a couple of tournaments down there, one in, in January 2019, one in January 2020. Um, and for me, poke, there's many people don't know this. They're only familiar with Melbourne and Holden. There's actually about, you know, eight, nine, ten plus different games of poker um, that are not just Melbourne and Holden. A lot of them are limit varieties and a lot of them are stud varieties or draw varieties and so on. And that, that's the kind of poker I prefer. And so the two tournaments I won were both in non no limit Hold'em events. They were in what we call mixed game events. Uh, for me, that makes poker a lot more interesting. Um, and yeah, I like to do it whenever I get the chance, but with you know the recent pandemic, live poker has been harder to find. It's, it's coming back now. Yeah. Uh, the World Series is just wrapping up in Las Vegas right now. I couldn't make it this year, but I hope to be over there in June next year. Wow, that would be, uh, that would be great. Just to, to say that I know someone that made it to the championship <laughs> table, all right? How cool is that? Yes. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Right. And I use Excel a lot to uh, analyze the, the game outside of the table, you know, when you're, you're looking. It's a very numbers-based game to study, and uh, Excel is a great help with that. Oh, that's a, great, that's a great use for Excel right there. I love that. That's Absolutely. perfect. That is great. All right. Well, Dan, thanks for joining us today. Uh, hey, if you like these videos, please down below, like subscribe and ring the bell feel free to post any questions or comments down in the comments below uh thanks to dan for joining us on uh to My talk pleasure. About thanks for having these me. three different ways and uh we'll see you next time for another netcast from mr excel let's hear you nancy mm -hmm.